Hi friends, welcome to the channel. If you've never seen my face before, I'm Olivia, and you can consider me your fragrance fairy godmother. As I'm sure a lot of you already know, the Grammys just passed and there were some absolutely iconic looks, and I got to thinking to myself, wouldn't it be a fun idea if we took some of the most iconic looks from the Grammys and paired them with a fragrance that kind of emulates what they're wearing? I've said this on Instagram before, and I don't know if this actually exists, but I would love to be a fragrance liaison for some celebrities and actors and helping them to match a fragrance with their wardrobe, creating an entire package. You know, you have the hair, you have the makeup, you have the outfit. Fragrance plays such a pinnacle role in the essence of everything, but I think people overlook that a little bit because a fragrance does not translate in a photo, so we don't really know what they smell like, but if I were to use my imagine, this is what I think that they would smell like. I chose 15 of my favorite looks. Doesn't mean that I'm going to get to everybody, so if I'm missing any iconic looks, comment it down below and we'll decide what we think that they smelled like. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we have Miley Cyrus in this absolutely incredible gold mesh dress, and it has some safety pin accents, and this was created by John Galliano for Maison Margiela. Now, first I thought to myself, I could play off the metal that's in her dress and give her something that is cold and metallic, but the warmth of the dress against her skin tone pulled me in a little bit different of a direction, so I wanted something that emulated a lot of warmth. And we can't forget that beautiful, iconic hairstyle that is modeled around Barbarella that's giving a little bit of a vintage edge. So I'm thinking warm and I'm thinking a little bit vintage. I could choose none other than Sexy Gehrig by Veronica Bai. So this is a super duper warm amber fragrance and you can see by the color I was quite inspired by her dress. Not only that, but amber can tend to have a little bit of a vintage vibe to it as a nod to her hairstyle. I also personally wouldn't see Miley in something super duper feminine. It has the note of labdanum that gives a little bit of a leathery edge. This has the warmth, it has the leathery touch, it has a little bit of patchouli, and I think Miley would completely rock a fragrance like this. And next we have Taylor Swift in this Schiaparelli gown. She's got the long dramatic slit up the leg, she's got the opera gloves on. This is giving something that is very womanly, very elegant, but still has a lot of power and presence, and that ivory color really danced off her skin and gave something so creamy. So I really wanted to play off something that is very feminine, that has presence, yet still feels very creamy. So we're going with Blanche Bet by Liquid Imaginaire. This is a white floral dominant fragrance that feels quite weighted. So it doesn't feel super girly, but rather very womanly. It has a milk note that gives it that creaminess that is popping right off of her dress. But to emulate the power that's radiating from those gloves and the long slit of the leg. This has an incense and it has a cacao, giving it a little bit of substance. It's not just a sheer white floral, but something that is super creamy and has a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a dark touch in the base. And next we have Lana Del Rey. Her entire career has really been modeled around wearing very vintage pieces with the hairstyle, the big puffy sleeves, and the pointed pumps. I was really looking at the lacy overlay and it immediately made me think of Delice by Mikalef. Playing off the warmth and soulfulness of her voice, I wanted a fragrance that had quite a bit of depth, but a little bit of a nod to a slightly gothic touch. And this is a rose fragrance that's a little bit spiced with nutmeg, and in the base you have an oud, and it's slightly sweetened up with some plum. So this is warm and spicy, aromatic, a little bit floral and woody, and I think that the bottle speaks for itself. I mean, it literally perfectly matches her. Next we have Doja Cat. This was an interesting one because at first glance you're looking at the pale pink which will feel very girly and demure. But if you look the dress is very sheer, a little bit scandalous. I was paying attention to those pops of red on her lips, on her shoes, and I really wanted to play up that accent color. So I wanted something that is going to feel young but still a little bit sultry and emulate that pop of red. So I'm going with Cherry Ambition by the 
the Seven Virtues. This is a cherry fragrance, so obviously we're getting that pop of red, but this has a marshmallow note, and her dress color is very demure and soft, a little bit marshmallowy, so I did want to add that delicate touch. But with the tattoos, I wanted something that dried down more substantial and wouldn't just be a fruity floral, because I think that she's got a little bit more of a punk rock and roll feel to her. So in the base, this does richen up with some woodiness and some warmth. So we're getting that pop of color. We are getting that marshmallowy pink, yet it does have some depth to it that I think Doja would pull this off perfectly. Next, we have Tyla. She has this beautiful geometric seafoam green dress that feels very springtime. And then in between, she has the Swarovski crystals that are adding quite a bit of sparkle. So I wanted to emulate something that is fresh, feels very springtime, and it brings that sparkling quality. So we're going with Naki by Père Noir. We are getting the sparkling characteristic from some aldehydes, but this is a fig leaf and a peach. It feels very dewy and fresh, a little bit sweet. I think that it emulates the color of the dress. This fragrance kind of reminds me of what I would imagine a mermaid to smell like. She looks a little bit like a mermaid, so we're pairing two and two together. And next we have Janelle Monet. I adore this dress. This is by Armani, and I was really paying attention to the sharp lines around the bust and the lay of her hair. This is very statement. It's very powerful. So we are going with Rose of the Dangerous Flamenco by Simone Andrioli. This is an incredible warm, dark, rich rose fragrance. You have the beautiful note of saffron, bringing in a little bit of a leathery touch because at first glance, you can't really tell that her dress is sequined. It almost looks like it could be a leather dress. It has that molten black sort of look to it. And then in the base, you get an incredible deep, rich oud. I was even inspired by her hairstyle as to the name of this fragrance. Kind of thought of how a lot of flamenco dancers will lay their edges down in performance and in looking at her hair it really mimicked the two so I thought it was a perfect choice. Next we have Olivia Rodrigo and she is wearing this absolutely incredible Versace dress that is actually older than her which originally debuted in 1995 on Linda Evangelista and although this dress is from 1995 it is very reminiscent of Marilyn Monroe's very famous dress. Her hair and makeup are very clean and chic and understated so I also also wanted to draw for something that has a very polished feel. So we're going with Dia 40 by Amouage. This is very reminiscent of a vintage cosmetics meets bathing products. It is very soapy, it's powdery, it's sparkling. It does have a little bit of sweetness to balance it because she is quite young. This is a beautiful modern iteration of a classic scent that I would still feel is appropriate for someone her age. It really emulates that clean and polished feel, a little bit vintage, very, very feminine. And next is Lenny Kravitz. Because he is already wearing quite a bit of leather, he would have the aroma of leather, so I thought it would be redundant to choose a fragrance that has that as a main note. So I wanted to play off something that is a little bit erotic because his outfit is quite revealing, a little bit erotic. He just has that presence. So I'm choosing Erotica Minimal. This to me is a unisex, slightly masculine leaning rose and iris fragrance, but this has a coriander and a patchouli to really give it an earthy groundedness. This is powdery and warm and floral and would play very nicely with the leather attire. And next is Paris Hilton. She seems like the type of gal that would really appreciate her fragrance bottle matching her outfit, but I also wanted to play up her personality, being very girly and sweet and lighthearted. So for that, I'm choosing Reckless by Roja. This to me is like a cousin to Love Don't Be Shy but this is significantly more citrusy and bright in the opening and it's not quite as powdery and thick on the dry down. So this is like the summertime version, but they do smell quite similar. It's got that beautiful, sweet, marshmallowy character. Knowing the fragrances that she's come out with in the past, she would appreciate. Next, we have Terry Crews. Terry Crews would look incredible in a potato sack, but he just looks so sharp and so elegant and so masculine, but he has this beautiful warmth to his personality. He is so funny. He is so uplifting. So I wanted something that felt very masculine and refined yet still had a warmth 
to it. So we're going with Black Anubis by Sphinx. This is a very, very sexy fragrance for a very, very sexy man. It's got a beautiful saffron, but it has a tonka bean that gives it that powderiness along with an amber that feels very rich, very refined and distinguished, yet still having that approachable characteristic. Funny side story, I saw him at the grocery store one time. It was when everyone was still wearing masks and I had forgotten to pick something up and my husband was waiting at the cash register. So I was running to pick something up and as I ran past, I thought he looked familiar. So I looked back and he just gave me this look and kind of raised his eyebrows to be like, oh yeah, it's me. That's the thing about living in LA is you will see people out sometimes, but you know, people want to have normal lives and probably not be talked to in a grocery store. So I'll just let him go about his business. And next we have Billie Eilish. Now Billie Eilish always has an androgynous punk vibe, but she has the Barbie shirt on and I thought it would be a little bit too on the nose to give her the Barbie fragrance. She does have a little bit of a masculine edge and I think that fragrance would be just a little bit too girly for what she's got going on. So I want to give her something that has a lot of quirkiness and a little bit of a young funky edge to it and I found the perfect thing. And that is petal juice. This has some creamy and sweet florals as a nod to the Barbie outfit, but this also has the note of vinyl. I could see her being the type of girl that would want something that is cutting edge, that doesn't smell like everyone else, and I could just imagine her playing records at her house to get inspiration. So as a nod to the Barbie, we have the creamy and sweet florals, but to her personality, we mix it up with a little bit of that vinyl. And next we have Kylie Minogue. She looks absolutely drop dead gorgeous in this red color. She is a total smoke show. And I wanted to play up that cherry red with a cherry note, but I didn't want it to be so on the nose. And I wanted something that was emulating just how sexy she looks in that dress. So I'm going with the brand new Narcotic Delight. This is a cherry fragrance, but it is quite different than a lot of cherry fragrances because it is not sickly sweet and medicinal and is made grounded with some rum and some tobacco. And the combination of the cherry, tobacco, and vanilla give this a little bit of a shisha vibe. So it's sweet, but it's warm, earthy, and rich. And it's a little bit spicy with that black pepper because she looks spicy. And next we have Phoebe Bridgers. Now this is the kind of thing that I would want to wear on a red carpet. I love the androgynous, yet very clean look. Perfectly sharp lines. It's simple, but it's so effective. So I wanted to figure out a fragrance that has a unisex vibe vibe that's very clean, chic, and minimalistic. So we're going with Verve Matin. This starts off very clean and sparkling and citrus, but then has a little bit of warmth from some cardamom. It's also quite aromatic with some clary sage and bay leaf, but in the base you do get a little bit of warmth with some myrrh and a little bit of cinnamon. Very clean, very chic and unisex, and just reminds me of a really chic, bougie, elegant hotel. I've said this before and I will say this again, I'm just so impressed by the quality of Navitas fragrances. They're very high quality niche fragrances, but they are affordable. And for what you get, the packaging is very thick, very substantial. They're super duper long lasting. You could just smell the quality. Every time I wear these, I'm just so, so, so impressed. And next we have Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson just really knows how to pull off a simple, elegant, vintage look. The outfit just fits her so perfectly and it is not overdone. It's not overstated. So I wanted to go for something that is elegant and refined and very perfectly womanly and put together. So we're going with A by Pantheon Roma. This starts off fruity and a little bit summery with mango and coconut, but there's a little bit of spiciness coming from some black pepper. But the sweetness is balanced out with a really, really nice natural smelling jasmine along with an iris that gives it some powderiness and then in the base you are getting a creamy soft vanilla and tonka bean. I didn't just want a floral fragrance. I wanted something that had a little bit of sweet fruitiness just knowing that her personality is quite bright and happy. And lastly we have Beyonce. I love that this isn't just a classic gown. This is something a little bit western inspired. It's not as stuffy as some of the looks so I wanted to give her something that plays off the leather 
color and plays into the scent of vintage cosmetics. So for that, we are choosing Quirasim. This smells like vintage lipstick in a Birkin bag. It is the most sumptuous, supple leather fragrance that still has quite a bit of femininity to it because I could not see her wearing really thick, dark, masculine leather, but the powderiness in this just sets it off. It doesn't feel too young. It doesn't feel too dated. It is just fun and it has a little bit of an edge to it. Well, that's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is quite different than my past videos, but I thought let's play a little bit with pop culture and fragrance. And as I said before, if I missed any iconic outfits, make sure that you comment them down below and we will assign them a fragrance. Thank you guys for watching and until next Saturday, 10 a.m. PST, take care of yourselves, my friends.